All right, guys, now that we have our interface built looking beautiful, let's go ahead and add the functionality to actually make these buttons work. In other words, whenever the user types information in here and they click add, we need to take this information, convert it to a product object, and then stick it in the table. And of course, the delete button is whenever they select an item, such as the notebook DVD and hit delete, it should actually delete it from this table. So let's get started. And before we do, we actually need to set actions on the add button. So whenever we click the add button, what do we want to occur? Well, we're just going to be building a method called add button clicked. And the same thing for the delete button. So delete button set on action, delete button clicked. And it looks good, so let's actually start building these methods. So I'll just put public void add button clicked. All right. So again, like I said, what we're going to be doing is whenever they click the add button, we're going to be going, looking at these inputs, seeing what they typed in, taking these values using it to build a product object and then sticking that object on our table it sounds confusing but it's actually incredibly simple so the first thing we need to do is create a blank product object set this equal to new product and remember I told you guys whenever we create a new product we can do so in one of two different ways we can create a blank product at first with these default values and then set all of the properties manually the name price and quantity or we can just add them all at once like we did down here. Now that's great if you're just using it with code you can use this technique but here's the thing whenever we're using user data to pretty much create a new object we want to make sure that they typed in the right data for example we want to do some validation in other words let's say that they typed in um, uh, like L7214 for price well we obviously don't want to store that in our database so we actually need to like validate and do some things with the value they typed in so we can't just do it this way so what we're going to be doing is this product set name and I'll just show you guys some real um, quick techniques I'm going to leave the advanced data validation up to you guys but we're basically going to be doing this for the name input we're just going to get the text in other words get whatever they typed in to that name input field and we're going to be using that as the name now for the product set the price of it alright so for the price of it whenever they type something in to this input right here by default it's a string so if we were to just do price input get text like that it's not gonna work it's giving us an error right now because it says okay the user typed in some value even if they type in a number it's still gonna view it as a string by default so we pretty much need to say okay we're setting a price we need to parse it into a double before we can use it as a product object and actually let me cut this so this is the string value of the price hopefully they typed in a number and if we call double parse double what we can do is we can paste in a string value for example the number like um, 2.49 for two dollars and forty nine cents it's going to take that string convert it into a double and set the products price as that so again this is just really um, a simple thing about what I was trying to explain earlier that we need to actually do some stuff to the user data before we just stick it in as a new product and the last thing we're just going to do the same thing for quantity now a quantity is actually an integer so if you call int parse int what this is going to do is it's going to take whatever value they typed in to the quantity input and it's going to convert it to an integer now again we're still going to have some problems if they like type in the word bacon as a price or a quantity but like I said I'll leave that up to you you guys already you know probably can figure out how to validate that kind of data so 
once we have a product developed, the product now has a name, a price, and a quantity. It's ready to go. All we have to do is we have to add it to the table. So in order to do that, we have to get items. And this gets all of the items that are already on the table. And we have to add product. So this actually sticks whatever they typed in converts to products and sticks it on the table but the one last thing I want to do is I actually want to clear all the input fields because if we just hit the add button it's going to add the item to the table but all of their data is still going to be in those input fields and it's going to be kind of weird so if you hit name input clear and what was it price input clear and quantity input clear all right, so now, actually, let me comment this out and run it real quick. So the add button logic is set up. All right, so they can type a name in such as um, like tuna fish. What is the price of tuna fish? Eight ninety nine. And how many do you have? I have uh, 65 tuna fishies. All right, I'm going to click add. It converts it to a product adds it to the table and all of these fields are clear now if I didn't hit clear then that tuna fish 899.65 would still be in there and they would have to actually select them all and delete them manually and we just saved them some time so now the add button works the delete button however we need to build that functionality so let me uncomment that I'll show you guys how to do that delete button clicked so public void delete button clicked all right now this is actually even easier what we're going to be doing whenever they hit the delete button is we're going to be getting a list of all the items currently in the table and then we're going to be getting a list of whatever item they selected and then we compare the two and pretty much say remove whatever they selected from all of the items in the table and it's actually probably easier if I just shut up and start typing some code so the observable list we of course need two of them and they're both going to be products product selected so we're going to have a list of product selected which is in this case just going to be one product and the second one is just going to be all products so this is going to be every item in the list everything you're selling and this is going to be the item that they currently have highlighted and all products set this equal to table get items so that's how you do that we already saw that up here gets all of the items currently in the table now for products selected it's kind of similar but not quite table get selection model and get selected items now again what this is going to return any items that the user has selected our selection model right now I believe we can only select one item but we can change that so they can select multiple items at a time but I'll just leave it like this for now alright so now we pretty much just have to go through and I'll show you guys a shorthand version of it so we can say for each product that they have selected what do we want to do? Well, we just want to say all products remove. So this is a shorthand version of it. Again, for all products that they have selected, remove them from all products. Pretty much remove them from the main table. So now let me run this and check it out. Make sure our add button is still work by typing tuna for $8.99 and we have you know 88 of them and now he's saying you know what I actually sold out of uh, bouncy balls a bunch of little rascals came in and bought them all let me just hit that and delete it and also corn you know I'm not selling corn anymore because who the heck buys corn delete that too and just like before you still have all of our functionality of sorting rearranging all that good stuff so that is pretty much how you work with tables ladies and gentlemen there are a couple other advanced features but I'm gonna wait till probably on a couple tutorials to talk to you guys about them 
we got other stuff to learn now. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you guys later.